In Oakhampton, on a mound surrounded by glorious greenery, stands the largest castle ruins in all of Devon. Oakhampton Castle is a fascinating and picturesque place. On my last trip to Devon, I found myself here, not for the first time, but armed with a camera and a GoPro, so I could tell its story to you today. This story begins with a man named Baldwin Fitzgilbert, who had many titles over the years. Originally from Normandy, France, he came to England during the Norman invasion of 1066, which would see William the Conqueror overthrow Anglo-Saxon King Harold II at the famed Battle of Hastings. Baldwin was one of Devon's Doomsday Book tenants-in-chief to William the Conqueror, his holdings in Devon comprised of nearly 200 sites. Now, England having a new Norman king didn't exactly sit well with many in the country. According to the Doomsday Book, Baldwin was Sheriff of Devon and Constable of Exeter Castle, as well as the owner of the Honour of Oakhampton by 1086 at least. His purpose in Devon was to keep the peace and deter insurrection from taking place within the Shire. This led to Oakhampton Castle's construction beginning around the year 1068, two years after the Normans had landed in England. The castle was completed by 1086, though specifics have been lost to history. Situated above the River Oakment, the fortress was positioned to protect an important trade route from Devon to Cornwall and control the new township that had been established by Baldwin around half a mile away. Over the years, this town would slowly engulf the nearby Anglo-Saxon town to form what we now know today as Oakhampton. Baldwin would pass away around the year 1090. Oakhampton Castle was inherited by his daughter, though it's believed his family weren't interested much by it. In 1173, the castle fell into the possession of Reynaud de Courtenay. I pronounced that name horribly wrong, I'm sorry, I'm not very good at that. Due to a marriage between his son and the daughter of William de Redvers, the Earl of Devon at the time. At this point, it's believed the castle still had some degree of military purpose, and as a result it was requisitioned by Richard I, or Richard the Lionheart if you're feeling romantic, between the years of 1193 and 1194 to assist in the defence of Devon. The Redvers family line would expire by 1297, thus the de Courtenays inherited all Redvers family lands, and Hugh de Courtenay would become the Earl of Devon. Under Hugh de Courtenay, Oakhampton Castle would be expanded and modified into a second home, a family retreat with plenty of hunting ground surrounding it. No longer a military fortress, Oakhampton Castle simply became an extra estate. In modern times, we'd refer to this as a holiday home for context. The de Courtenay equivalent to your aunt's Welsh static caravan, I guess. For the de Courtenay family, Oakhampton Castle was a hunting lodge above all else. A home away from their primary residence at Tiverton Castle. Complete with a 1700 acre deer park intended for the hunting of game. They would consume venison and fish from the ponds though a lot of this was imported. This in itself, if the castle wasn't enough, was a massive status symbol of the time. The Courtenays would own Oakhampton Castle for centuries, and the family increased in size. By around the year 1410, when Hugh de Courtenay's descendant, Hugh de Courtenay, would visit, his extended household would be around 140 strong, including 61 servants, 41 esquires, 14 lawyers, 8 clergymen, and 3 damsels. Naturally, to accommodate this number, the castle would undergo further renovation in order to ensure its facilities could actually house that many people. Which is how a community's worth of structures came to accompany the keep, which stood atop an artificial mound towering above the rest of it. During the 15th century, the War of the Roses broke out. The Courtenays found themselves involved, of course. This would lead to Oakhampton Castle being confiscated by King Edward IV at some point prior to 1470. However, Henry VI would return the estate to the Courtenays before the year 1471. It would be confiscated again in 1471 after the Battle of Tewkesbury, only to be returned when Henry VII became king in 1485. 
Then along came William Courtenay, whose political career was anything but stable. He found Oakhampton Castle being briefly confiscated once again during the early 1500s. His son, Henry, would later be executed by King Henry VIII, and his lands were confiscated in 1539. However, this time, it was permanent. After 350 years of history tied to this estate, the English House of Courtenay would never see the inside of Oakhampton Castle again. At the very least, not as its owners. It's possible that some stonework was removed to be taken and used elsewhere. However, after this final confiscation, Oakhampton Castle was left to fall into disrepair. That being said, ownership of it was still necessary to preside over the appointment of Oakhampton's two Members of Parliament, though this isn't necessarily too relevant to the castle itself as it remained in decline until the early 20th century when the castle was purchased by a local man named Sidney Simmons, who cleared away the overgrowth that had consumed the castle and began to repair the stonework thereafter, before handing the site to the Oakhampton Castle Trust in 1917. Repairs were carried out over the decades that followed and archaeological investigations occurred in the 1970s. Now, the best part of 1,000 years after its initial construction, the castle is a tourist attraction run by English Heritage and is a protected Grade 1 listed building. Even past its prime, the site of this medieval Mott and Bailey castle is glorious. The stone keep atop the artificial mound, even if mostly missing, still dominates the landscape and truly highlights the rich history of this amazing site. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit subscribe to Decades. That's all I ask.